We're now going to look at the case of the local exchange point where the upstream provider is also peering at the IX. This again is a relatively common example where all the operators wish to participate in the local exchange point, but perhaps two or three operators serving the economy where the IX is located are also the transit providers for everybody else. So how do we ensure that transit traffic goes on the transit link and peering traffic goes on the peering link? If we look at the diagram, we've now got AS100 connecting to the exchange point as before, and AS100 connecting to the transit provider through router C. And the transit provider participates in the exchange point. Outbound traffic from AS100 is quite simple to set up. Outbound traffic from AS100 follows the following. The upstream will send the full BGP table to AS100, say. Upstream provider will send domestic routes to the exchange point peers. AS100 will use the exchange point for domestic traffic and will use the upstream link for international traffic. So outbound traffic was quite simple to achieve. What about inbound traffic towards AS100? Well, AS100 will send the address block to the IXP peers, and it will send the address block to the upstream. The best path from the upstream to AS100 has two paths. It has one path going through the transit link and another path through the peering link. So how do we separate international and domestic inbound traffic? If we want domestic traffic to go over the peering link and international over the transit link, what do we do? Well, the solution is to separate the ASs out. There are other solutions, but they are actually very fiddly and really not best practice. The best solution is to separate the autonomous systems. After all, autonomous system represents routing policy. It's not the fence around the company's network. It's to separate the policy applied to different parts of the infrastructure. So the domestic network, which peers at the exchange point, clearly belongs in a separate autonomous system from the transit part of the infrastructure. So what the operator needs to do is separate the infrastructure into domestic and transit, as the diagram shows. AS150 is the domestic network, where all the access and content is hosted. And AS160 is the transit part of the network, which sells transit to other network operators in the area. So let's look at how this is set up. Inbound traffic to AS100 now follows this. AS100 sends address block to IXP peers, including AS150, which is their upstream provider's domestic network. AS100 sends address block to its upstream, AS160. Router D in AS150 does not pass prefixes learned from exchange point peers to AS160. That's the important rule. Now, the best path from the upstream to AS100 will be preferred via the transit link. The domestic AS will use the IX, the transit AS will use the direct transit link to AS100. So, transit providers who peer with their customers at an exchange point for local routes need to split the AS signs into two. One AS for domestic business and domestic routes, and another AS for international transit routes. And two AS numbers are entirely justifiable from the regional registries because these two ASs have completely different routing policies. A domestic AS peers at the exchange point, and the transit AS connects to transit customers and upstreams. And this solution is much easier to implement than other solutions such as complex source address policy routing. Remember, an autonomous system is used for representing a distinct routing policy, and it doesn't necessarily map onto an organization. 
A transit business will have different routing policy from an access business or a hosting business, and therefore will quite likely have a different autonomous system number for each.